I knew my time had come. As I laughed, I ran. This was everything I had hoped for, my chance to kill. I didn't care how or who, but someone was going to die today, and I was going to be a part of the gun club, which I had so cherished. From that moment forward, our efforts became more intense. We began getting intelligence, quote unquote, of suspected terrorist safe houses, weapons caches. We would gear up, blare our death metal, and pump each other up comparing body counts, telling each other it's only a matter of time before we get another. We knew every way to walk right around the line of engagement, the rules of engagement. What a joke. To us grunts, rules of engagement were not rules at all, but merely words on a piece of paper somewhere printed for the sole purpose of protecting officers if we grunts actually got caught. Try to imagine yourself tonight as you sleep warm in your bed with your wife, your children in the next room. 2 a.m., your door is kicked in and men are screaming. As they kick open your bedroom door, they're screaming in a language you don't understand. They're pointing machine guns at your face as they drag you by your hair from your bed, slamming your face down onto the ground, putting their boots on the back of your neck and smashing your face farther into the concrete floor. Your struggle to protect your family and your home is futile as you are blindfolded and handcuffed so tight you lose feeling in your hands <coughs> within minutes. All you know is you can hear your screaming wife and children crying for help, and you are too useless to protect them. You are not on a list of suspected terrorists. You are not on a list of known terrorists. In fact, you completely supported the U.S. coming into your country and promising freedom and prosperity. You were simply a man in a house on a street that my platoon decided to search. When your blindfold is finally released, the men have left your home, it's destroyed. Your wife and children are hurled in a quarter defenseless and crying. Every drawer in your home is thrown, the contents broken, soiled. Your bed has been urinated on. Your wife's panties are glued to the wall. Maybe a family heirloom is missing or other job objects stolen. The floor is wet with fresh chewing tobacco spit and you vainly try to tell your family it'll be okay and never happen again, but in your heart you know all the while your chances are it probably will. As time continued to pass, my ego grew stronger and my hate boiled within my veins. A scene like this was nothing more than a Tuesday to me. I laughed as I heard a story one of the platoons had strapped dead bodies from a gunfight to the hoods of their Humvees and drove around the city for hours, blasting death metal music as they terrorized the population. Just another Tuesday to me. Back on post, there was a time when somehow, someway, an Iraqi had managed to get himself lost and ended up knocking on the door to my post, which happened to be next to our sleeping area. As I answered the door and saw the Iraqi standing there, I accepted my fate. And I jumped on top of him. I accepted he was a suicide bomber, and I had seen my last day as I began to punch him. Brutally, I sat on top of him, punching him as hard as I could. After a moment, I got him under control and handcuffed him. He was simply a man who had just gotten lost. I was punished harshly, not for my actions, not for harming an un armed civilian, but for not killing him. I was told he should have been killed for being there and I would have been protected. I was forced to burn human feces, stand hours of additional post, and physically punished. I was ostracized and called a wuss and a girl for not killing him. I had lost all the respect that I had gained and that I had killed for to earn. I was forced to stand six hours of post at a time, directly behind an air conditioning unit, with all the heat blasting out the backside onto my face, in the middle of the summer in one of the hottest places on the earth. I stood that post 12 hours a day, 40, four days a week, for over a month. 
the man that arose from that month was someone I hope to never meet again. The last bit of humanity and morality I had left was gone. I laughed as Marines told me they had just shot this guy in the head and saw his head explode. Just another Tuesday to me. One Tuesday they brought a car that had just been shot up. The driver's fully intact brain was sitting in the back seat. And to looks of it, the passenger's brains were all over the car. I walked over to the body bag with the passenger in it. The bag was still twitching. And we could hear his body still attempting to breathe, even though his brains were clearly all over the car. We laughed as we stomped him. Just another Tuesday to me. These are just some of the Tuesdays that fill a seven-day calendar. I was given a medium machine gun an unloaded ammo, and just told to spend a couple of hours per post down at a post that was usually unmanned. It had extended view and less observers that could see what I was doing while I was down there. It was expressed to me that I was now a shooter and was being placed down there to shoot. Don't worry, we have your back. Make sure your combat reports are rock solid and we'll take care of you. You saw two guys with weapons and one ran off. Rules of engagement may change like the tides of the ocean or the winds of a hurricane, but people don't come back from the dead. Sometimes, from one hour to the next, the rule of engagement would change. At 10 a.m., someone with a shovel on, the, on a certain street would be killed, and at 10.30, he shouldn't be killed. You can change the rule, but you can't bring that person back to life. And when you can't bring him back to life, you tell me that I just murdered him. After returning home from the war, I began drinking, not caring. I had an attitude that ruled my life where I didn't care if I lived, if I died, where I went, or what I did. As the mental brainwashing and numbing that the Marine Corps had given me dissipated, the only way to substitute that numbing was through alcohol. I started to think back to the people I shot and the lives that I ruined through my hatred and violence and sometimes it was just too much for me to handle. This war has not only taken the lives of countless Iraqis, men, women and children, but it has destroyed how many? Who knows? Countless American lives have been destroyed. American veterans, people who join to serve their country and be American heroes. Many vets feel that there's just no one out there who can help them and end up on the street homeless with nothing, or sometimes worse. Veterans are attempting and completing suicide attempts at an unprecedented rate. That's for a reason. What's worse, to die for no reason, or to live a life of violence and destruction, internal structure and hatred, every single day for no reason. To live every day knowing that everything that was instilled in me from the moment I was born as a free American boy, all the morals and everything that was taught to me, I gave away at the moment I pulled the trigger for acceptance. <clears throat> The moment that I beat another human being half to death simply to feel like the heroes that I held with such regard. I know today that I cannot mend the things that I have broken or fix the lives that I have destroyed, but maybe with my testimony today, I can help one person. That might help two people, who eventually can help four. And maybe all of us together, standing united, can prevent these atrocities from ever happening again. Thank you.
narrated by Martin Sheen. Boy, this is going to shock a lot of people.